wild day. It's quite scrawly out there, isn't it? Windy and wet. It's had a contrast from yesterday. So if you haven't had a chance to go out or if you've only been out for a little while because it was just too wet and windy, um, then this is the practice I hope that will warm you up. It's a practice we've done in the past. I'm going to jumble it up and make it a little more interesting. But it's one you may recognize because it's a way of warming yourself up. What we're going to do is raise what we call the agony. The agony is the fire, the fire within us. And uh, it's a lovely practice, as I say, that helps to warm, energize and open you so that it leaves you feeling less cold, less tight. And certainly, hopefully, that flood of energy and warmth will see you through for the rest of the day, particularly when the weather is as it is today, cold and damp. So let's warm ourselves up. Now, before we start, let's just do a little bit of housekeeping. Make sure you've got plenty of space around you so that when you stretch out, you're not going to go into the kitchen cupboard or knock over your tea set or something. So enough space to stretch the body out. Today, we may use a block, particularly for the meditation. But do remember, if sitting cross-legged on a block or cushion doesn't suit you, then always go towards you know, the sofa or sit on a chair. This is purely for the seated work and the seated meditation at the end of the practice. So again, you can always, if you wish to, either lie down or take yourself to a chair and sit there. But a block or a cushion you may want to grab. And do grab some water, okay? Hopefully as you feel a little warmer, you're going to energize and open the body. So do stay hydrated, okay? Have some water to hand if you can. Great, well, we're going to start. Now, the first pose that we're actually going to do is we're just going to sit quietly and just take one or two deep breaths. Hmm. So, sitting on your chair, your sofa, or your block, let's sit down, if you can, cross-legged. Remember, if this is uncomfortable, do park yourself on your sofa or chair if, if that's more comfortable. Let's open the practice and arrive in the space. Now we had a little technical problem at the beginning, so we're gonna finish about 2.03, okay? So you get your full hour. So if you've just joined us, we're gonna work till about three minutes past two. So we get our full hour. So let's sit quietly. And today's theme is warming yourself up, warming from the inside out, okay? On this cold, windy day, we're gonna do poses that help stir up in the best possible way, the agni, which means we're stoking the inner fire, A-G-N-I, we call it in yoga, it's that inner fire we're going to stoke. What this can give us is clarity. So if your mind is feeling a little bit confused, if you've got a little bit of a fog brain going on, if you're you know, not quite clear of your steps whilst moving forwards, this practice can bring about clarity and that can help with all sorts of situations, can't it? So, Let's sit quietly, let's think about agony, and we'll just start with a really nice positive affirmation. We're going to take five slow breaths together, and every time you exhale, I want you to, if you wish to, repeat out loud or inwardly to yourself the affirmation, my inner resolve remains strong. That's my inner resolve remains strong. So that strength coming from within, so closing the eyes if that's comfortable, hands resting on the knees. Remember, you could be sitting in a chair if that's easier for you today. And with the eyes gently closed, we're gonna focus on five deep breaths together. Let's breathe in fully. And as we exhale, just saying inwardly to yourself or out loud if you wish, my inner resolve remains strong. Breathing in fresh energy. And as we exhale, my inner resolve remains strong. And just take three more slow breaths, yogis. With that intention in mind, the affirmation is, my inner resolve remains strong. And just focusing as you inhale gently and exhale fully. And let those words simply ruminate around you. My inner resolve remains strong. Let's enjoy two more deep breaths together. Mm. 
Inhaling fully. Exhale evenly and deeply. And then as we inhale again, opening the eyes as you exhale, and quietly just repeating that lovely affirmation to yourself again if you wish to. My inner resolve remains strong. And relax. What a lovely way to open up our practice with such a positive um, sentence. And also coming from within, it comes back to that agony, the inner, the inner resolve, the inner fire that we're going to keep strong. And then if you're sitting, we'll shake the legs out and we're going to just come up to standing. The first pose is actually a balance, which I know can feel a little bit daunting, but please don't because we're going to do this in stages. So remember, today's practice is about warming yourself up. It can promote clarity and it's excellent for all parts of our body, including the quadriceps, the core, and the back muscles. So today particularly we're working quadriceps, our core and our back muscles, which are all areas that get tight when it's cold and chilly like today. So let's begin to warm ourselves up. Let's stand in what we know as Talasana. So feet about hip width apart, toes and ankles facing forwards. Simply roll your shoulders back, yogis. Take a deep breath in and out here. Allow yourself a moment just to come into standing. And remembering that standing can affect our mood, our posture, even our thinking. So standing, gazing ahead gently, distribute the weight evenly across both feet and breathe. Take a breath in with me. And a deep breath out. Now, I'm going to start by taking the weight onto the left leg. And for me, and it may work for you, I like to take that right leg out to the side and just start to come up onto the ball of the right foot to establish I'm stacking the weight into the left leg. I want this leg to emulate the trunk of a tree. Whenever I look outside today and I see the trunks of a tree, they never move. It's the branches that waver, but the trunk is strong, it's anchored and it's grounded. And that's what that leg wants to be, as strong and as steady as the trunk of the tree. And then with the right foot, I simply rest it on top of the left. Now I'm naturally going to wobble. So if I place my hands on my hips, that helps to steady me. Always think about going towards a wall or use the back of a heavy chair to just hold on to and balance with, if easier. But if you can, simply take the right foot gently, rest it stacking on top of the left, hands on your hips and hold for as long as you comfortably can. When you start to waver and wobble, that may be a good indication to come off. And let's switch sides. So now, again, take a moment to breathe into the right leg. That's going to be the standing leg. Left foot on top of right. Hands, perhaps, if it helps, holding onto the hips to steady you. Gazing ahead. And allow yourself a moment here. Breathing all the way down into that right leg. And then release. We're going to try that again. And this time we're going to go up a little bit. Plenty of time to do this. So bending the right knee, I'm going to bring the sole of the right foot to rest on the inner calf of my left leg, keeping my right knee open. And bring the hands gently to the prayer position. Again, go towards the wall. If you're wobbling today, don't be too hard on yourself. Have a go. Make sure you keep your breath even. And again, focusing ahead. And if you wish to, you can say the words, I am strong and focused. As you look forwards, I am strong and focused. And again, release if you get tired and heavy, you start to wobble. And again, just gently stacking the weight onto the right leg when you're ready, bending the left knee, carefully and slowly bring the left foot to rest just below the right knee. Keep the left knee as open as you can. This helps to facilitate the opening of the hips and hands in the prayer position, just for a change now, or back to the hips. Again, find a focal point. So look ahead softly. Remember the affirmation. I am strong and focused. Breathe into the standing leg. Relax the body. Strong yet focused. Excellent. And release. Now the legs get heavy, so give them a shake out. I'm going to go into the third part of the balance, the tree pose. 
and this is stronger. So again, don't feel that you're cheating. If you want to go towards the wall and have a go and use the wall to steady you or the back of a heavy chair to hold on to, then do it. Please feel free. Left leg is strong. Right knee bent. This time I'm going to bring the sole of the foot all the way up to the left groin. Now if, like me, you might have lycra on, they can be a bit slippy, so take care. Hands back in the prayer position. One or two deep breaths as you look forwards. I am strong and I am focused. Take a deep breath, release when you need to. Even one breath is fantastic. And I find, certainly with the lycra that I'm wearing, that my leg feels quite slippy. So if this is too strong, go back to the first version of tree if you wish to. Simply place one foot on top of the other. I am strong and I am focused. Don't forget to keep your breath relaxed. Good, exhale here. And then carefully, let's straighten the leg. And do remember, you know, shake it out, let the legs relax for a moment, grab some water if you need to. And the wonderful thing about that pose is it builds strength and stamina, but it's also incredibly good for enhancing concentration and focus. So if you've not been able to focus this week, it's a wonderful pose to revisit and it will help. It's also said to be extremely good for our memory. Well, let's move on now. We're going to have a go at a standing forward bend. It's nice, this practice. It's almost some of the poses like giving yourself a big hug as well. So nourishing and nurturing the sweet self. So here we are, we're going to come into a forward bend. Now, if you've got back issues, remember these poses do help open and energize those back muscles, but we're still sort of warming up gently. So have your knees a slight bend there, just a little micro bend in the knees, feet are together, hands here, and we fold down slowly. Now, as you start to fold down, yogis, do if you can, soften the knees. We're gonna Take the hands all the way down. And we're going to either hold on to the front of the legs or take the hands round to the back of the calves. Or for those that want to go a little further, bring the fingertips, if you can, to the floor, just ahead of the feet like myself. Gaze towards your upper thighs. And we're going to hold for six, yeah, six breaths. So if your knees are bent, please don't worry. Absolutely fine to have the knees bent. Focus on raising the hips rather than straightening the knees. A bent knee is fine. Hands are either on the floor or holding onto the back of your calf muscles if you can. Okay, now just let's hold this for five more deep breaths. Nice deep even breath here. Remember if your knees are bent, that's fine. Focus on breathing into this part. This is called the hamstrings. Gaze towards your upper thighs, let the head and neck relax, hanging down. And if you feel any discomfort, then do please rise up, come out of the pose should you need to. Very strong stretch for the outer body, so keep the breath relaxed. Even breath in and out. Should we manage one more yogis together? Inhale with me. Exhale fully. Now let's bend the knees. Start to rise up slowly. Keep your knees bent. Do make this a leisurely journey. Knees remain bent. And slowly, slowly uncurling the spine. Take your time. Don't rush that all the way to standing, and then roll those shoulders back several times. Good, and shake it out. Now I appreciate that that pose is very strong on the low back, and that's why if you've got low back issues, always keep a micro bend in the knees. Always keep the knees slightly bent, but a great stretch. Let's come down now onto our mats. If you're one of the many people that have issues with your knees, and by all means, get an extra blanket now, pad up underneath your knees if you need to. And we're going to have a little go at a pose that's nurturing and also very releasing for the spine. And that's called the revolve leg lunge. So we're lunging on one leg, but we're going to turn it into a twist. 
And anything where you're twisting is said to be warming and energizing for the spine. It's also a great pose for the gut and the digestive system, okay? So, coming on to all fours, bring your right foot forwards for me. So you're kneeling on the left knee, right foot forwards. And firstly, let's just establish that we're working those quadriceps, the thigh muscles. So it's the left thigh that activates the stretch at the moment. We can take a moment to rest the hands on the right thigh and roll the shoulders back several times. Just keep the front of the body nice and open as you look forwards. Collarbone, clavicle area, all open as we gaze ahead. Then we're going to bring the palms together in front of the chest. And a key, a nice little trick here is to cross the thumbs over. It helps to keep the palms together. And we're going to take that left elbow and hook it to the outside of the right knee. I'll just say that again. Your left elbow hooked to the outside of the right knee so that we can start to very gently gaze towards that right elbow behind us. We're twisting to our right. Now, if you don't like looking behind, that's too wobbly yogis. Simply gaze down towards the right foot and let your spine do the work. Now, there's always a nice affirmation and I'd like to add this one and it's these words. I am guided and protected as I move forwards in life. I'm guided and protected as I move forwards in life. And the nice thing about this affirmation when we look behind us is that not only is it positive, but twists are said to help with fear so that we have nothing to fear behind us as we look behind us. It can break down body armor like a tight spine or a sore back. And so as we gaze behind us, we actually realize there's nothing to fear. What a wonderful positive affirmation. We're guided and protected as we move forwards in life. Again, if looking behind feels too strong, don't worry. Gaze down towards the leading foot. Your spine will still be receiving a lovely twist. Let's take another deep breath in. And as we exhale, we come back and we switch sides. Now, so you can see this on the other side, what I will do is I will change sides. So I bring my left foot forwards now, I'm lunging and kneeling on the right leg, the right quadricep, the muscles of the front thigh getting a delicious stretch. But again, take a moment to place your hands on that left thigh, roll the shoulders back, gaze ahead, and simply arrive in the space. Notice if one thigh feels tighter. Certainly when you come into the twist, you may find one side of your spine is more open and the range of motion different there. Palms come together, crossing the thumbs over the opposite way. We're going to hook now the right elbow to the outside of the left knee carefully and gaze behind us, guided and protected as we move forwards in life. That's our affirmation. And if looking behind is tricky today, just turn the gaze and look towards the left foot. Let your spine do the work. Let's hold for two more deep breaths. This is warming and energizing for the spine. One more full breath in and out if you can, yogis. Nothing to fear. Let's come back on the exhale, release. And from here, yogis, we're going to come up again, but we'll go into a downward dog. Now, what's rather nice at this stage is, if you can, either sit back on your heels, and that's a great stretch, okay? That's just a, a lovely stretch. If you wanted to make it stronger, you can come up and curl the toes under, and then sit back on the heels. Now, that is very strong, but that is such a good stretch for your foot. So either curling the toes under, sitting high up on the heels, or resting the front of the foot and looking forwards. And then just gently bring the hands to the heart center. And it's just a moment really to focus on the breath again, to focus on physically how you feel at this point in the practice. And again, there's a nice affirmation. And it's these words. I am grateful for all that life has to offer. Let's enjoy three deep breaths here, yogis. I am grateful for all that life has to offer. And just a moment of thanks 
for this sacred space, this sacred moment, and for our bodies and breathing. I am thankful for all that life has to offer. Allow yourself a moment to breathe and give thanks. Excellent, okay. Always nice to just pause and be thankful for this moment, but also a moment to breathe and focus on the sensations in our body. A just stop gap to just think, how do I feel so far? You know, how's the, the practice feeling? And hopefully a little warmer. Well, yogis, that little rest prepares you for a stronger pose, and that's going to be downward dog. Then we're going to come into the twisted triangle. So let's set ourselves up for downward dog. We're going to tuck our toes under, our knees and feet are hip width apart, hands on the floor, arms are strong. Now again, how long you stay in your downward dog being a strong inversion is entirely up to you this afternoon. I'm going to hang out for five deep breaths, but remember one, two, three breaths is absolutely fine, okay? Come down and rest in all fours or even into pose of child if you find it's too strong, okay? So just stay for as long as you comfortably can. So I've just sat back on the heels a little bit. They're tucked under, knees and feet apart. I can take an extra moment here to distribute the weight through the fingers and both palms. And then I can inhale and go up. Keep my feet and knees hip width apart. Perhaps my knees are bent. That's absolutely fine. Focus on gazing towards my upper thighs. And let's walk the dog. Let's... Pad one heel down as we breathe in, and pad the other heel back and down as we breathe out. And very slowly and gently, we just start to ease into that inversion. Breathing in, breathing out. Find a point to focus on the knees or the upper thighs. Let the head hang, relax the head and neck as much as you can. And let's hang out here for one more deep breath if comfortable. Really lovely, deep breath work here. Lovely. And then slowly we'll start to walk our feet together towards the hands and again with bent knees. Chin tucked in, we start to rise up slowly. This is really key here, yogis, don't rush it. Imagine like a rag doll, Anne or Andy style. Come up nice and slowly. Let it be a leisurely journey. Be mindful of whatever's going on in the spine to happen slowly. Don't shock the system by rushing up and don't lock the knees. When you do come up, just gaze ahead. Take a pause again. Take a deep breath in and enjoy the breath out. And then shake it out. It's always better to come up leisurely and slowly rather than fly up and hurt your spine. That's just going to put you off yoga for life. So, yeah, make it, make it a leisurely journey as you come up, particularly when you're coming from floor work to standing work, okay? Grab some water if you need to. I'm just going to have a little sip of my water. Okay. Let's now try triangle, but the twisty version. So this is where you can always grab a block. If you don't have a block, yogis, um, a really hard back book will do. So if you've got a big book or a box, you can always use that, okay? But a block is substantial as well. Now we're gonna practice this together. It's known as revolved triangle pose, okay? So we're turning the opposite way um, in this triangle pose. And again, it requires strong legs, and also energizes the whole body. So, I need to take this block just to one side. So I'm taking it to my left side of my mat. I'm going to take my left foot forwards and my right foot turned out about 45 degrees behind. Now the block is just ahead of my little left toe. So where my left toe is, the block is just along from there and slightly further up, almost at the corner of my mat. I take the arms to shoulder height. My hips are square to the front, so left leg is leading, right foot is turned out, about 45 degrees behind. I'm going to breathe in here, arms at shoulder height, and carefully take my right hand to the block. 
and then I could always adjust and bring it a bit closer if I need to. Remember, a block or an old book are fine. Now the left arm is pointing skywards. Try to keep that arm in alignment with the shoulder, so don't fling it back or forwards. Palm of the left hand facing forwards, and I'm gazing up towards it. Now I want to hug the muscles of my thighs into the thigh bones, and I'm aiming to open and revolve the chest as I look towards that left arm, my right hand on the block. Doesn't matter how long you hold this for, yogis, keep your toes soft and long and aim for one or two deep breaths. This is warming, energizing. Remember, yogis, we can rest at our center here, but we can also draw strength from our center. Rest at your center, but draw strength from it as well. And your center in this case is the belly. So breathe into it, relax it, but remember to draw strength from it. I'm gonna inhale. As I exhale, I come down carefully, take my hands back to my waist, bend my front knee carefully, and again, rise up slowly and carefully to the center and relax. Well done. Now I'm gonna show you that on the other side so you can see fully. This time the right foot is in front, the left foot's turned out 45 degrees. Go as wide as a triangle pose, no wider. The block or the book that you're using is going to be, again, just near to the little right toe. In fact, just beyond that. Okay? And you can always adjust that should you need to. So right foot leading, left foot turned out now in revolve triangle pose. Let's take the arms out to the side and take a deep breath in. We're going to exhale, bend the front knee if you need to, and bring your left hand across to rest on the block, just on the outside of that right toe, those right feet. And we're going to raise the right arm behind us, twist from the belly, gaze upwards. If you can, try and straighten both legs, but that's pretty strong, I appreciate. So do bend the front knee if you need to. Gazing up towards the right arm, Hold for one or two deep breaths if you can. Revolve triangle. Nice deep breath. Focus on breathing into the legs. Warming and energizing, but a strong pose. And one side again may feel easier than the other. Rest at your center, but draw energy from that center. That's our belly button and our belly here. Breathing in and out from that strong epicenter. I'm gonna inhale. Calm down, exhale, bend my front knee and carefully hands to my hips as I rise up slowly, avoiding hurting my back. Um, remember this is strong, so come forwards, shake it out, give yourself a moment, take a deep breath in and out. Good job, well done and nicely done. It's not an easy pose, but remember today is about warming yourself up and providing clarity as well as working thighs, hamstrings, core, and strengthening those low back muscles. Okay, now you've just had a lovely go at the revolved chair pose where you were kneeling and twisting. Well, now we're going to do a similar pose standing. Again, this is said to heat, rise, raise the agni, the energy, the heat from our tummies. And on a cold day, we're warming ourselves up. So yogis, with that in mind, Let's again show you this from the side. So bring your feet together. I will profile myself to the side so you can see this. We come firstly into chair pose. Chair pose activates the thigh muscles again. It's great for the core. It's strengthening for back and good for our knees. So we're going to just come into a sort of standing chair pose. So bring your hands to your heart center. And I want you to exhale and sit back, keep the knees and feet together, sit back on that imaginary chair. So you're lifting the buttocks as if you were trying to sit on an imaginary chair. Now with the hands here in the prayer position, cross the thumbs over if you wish to, and bring that right elbow, hook it to the outside of your left knee. So right elbow, hook to the outside of the left knee, and once more looking behind, twisting to your left. And I want you to enjoy the affirmation as you breathe. And it's these words. 
I always have possibilities. That's our affirmation. As we look behind, I always have possibilities. Lovely positive affirmation. Breathe from your belly into your low back here. This is strengthening for low back muscles. One more deep breath in and out if you can, yogis. Lovely. Let's hold for another deep breath in. I always have possibilities. Now as we exhale, we can use that breath wisely to come back to standing and relax. Good. Well, that means we've got a twist to the other side. So take a breath, shake it out if need be. And then let's have a go on the other side. Feet together, palms together. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, again, imagine sitting back on the chair. Try and keep the feet and knees as close as you can, yogis. And when you're ready with the next inhale, aim to hook your left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Now you're twisting and looking up towards your right elbow. That's it. Nice, deep, even breath. Remembering the affirmation if you wish to. I always have possibilities. Positive, future orientated, happy affirmation. Aim for two more deep breaths if you can. But if that's enough for you, please release if you need to. I always have possibilities. And notice in your own body, yogis, if left and right differences are there physically, one side may feel quite different to the other. And do know that's completely normal. Let's come up and use the exhalation to release. Shake it out. Wow, what a strong pose. And again, we may not feel the effects right away, but later in the day, our digestive system may feel more efficient because whenever we twist, we're igniting the energy and fire and we're speeding up the elimination and digestive process. So you may not feel externally these poses, internally, they're doing 100% good. Okay, yogis, so moving on nicely, we're going to do a nice balance again. Another pose that stokes our inner fire, that agony we talked about. So great for the inner body and keeping warm. This is a balance. So again, it's improving mental and also cognitive, but equally it's great for memory, okay? So balances are said to just help remember things. And of course, you're building stamina and strength. It is strong. We're going to try three sets. And it's known as the chair pose variation. The chair pose variation. So again, if I turn sideways so you can see, knees and feet together. Let's just take a moment, roll back the shoulders. Breathe in. Take a deep breath out and send that energy all the way down to the heels. And another breath in. Send it all the way down into your heels. Good. Okay, so now we're going to prepare ourselves with our breath. We can start the pose. So let's come into chair pose again. See, I've bent the knees as though I were sitting in my imaginary chair, knees and feet together. I come up onto the board of the foot, raise the arms to shoulder height, palms down, and gazing ahead. And we hold and breathe. Nice, deep, even breath. And why not, let's add another affirmation here. And these are the words. I can do whatever I set out to accomplish. I can do whatever I set out to accomplish. So as you gaze ahead and breathe, see if you can hold for another deep breath in and out. I've come up onto the toes, focusing ahead, Breathing deeply. Now you might need to release before me, that's fine. Exhale, release the feet down, relax the arms. Ooh, it's important to breathe and that really warms the system up. It's an excellent pose for warming the whole body temperature. And I don't know about anybody else, but I feel a lot warmer. We're gonna do two more. The affirmation is strong and powerful. Having a go, doing whatever we can set out to accomplish, achieving that. So. Let the words surround you, ruminate, and add strength and purpose to your pose. 
but only hold for as long as you can. Do we have another go? So in this chair pose variation, our feet and legs are together. We come into our imaginary chair and first and foremost, raise the arms, palms are down, just to shoulder height, no higher. Now, a lot of people hold the tension in their face. So if you're holding the tension there, gritting your teeth or holding your jaw, I want you now to focus on just releasing a little of the tension in the face. Gaze softly ahead. Inhale, come up onto the ball of the foot and then squatting down. You've raised the heels. I can do whatever I set out to accomplish. And if that's holding this for one more breath, have a go. But if you're tired, release now. Breathe and hold, just for as long as you can. I can do whatever I set out to accomplish. That's our affirmation. Either saying it aloud or to yourself as you breathe evenly. When you've held that for long enough, come up, relax, shake it out. Do you feel warmer, yogis? I hope you do. So whenever it's cold, whenever you're just feeling a little stuck, that's the one to do. It's a great pose to warm the body and it's actually working so much of your body as well. Just shake it out, take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Notice if you feel warmer. Great work. We're gonna do it once more. I think the thing here is just to try to release the gaze and the jaw because a lot of people tend to hold the tension there, particularly in this pose. Remember to breathe, relax your gaze and your jaw as you do it. Once more if you wish to. So, feet together. If you're tired, skip the last one. Come into your imaginary chair, knees and feet together, arms at shoulder height facing down. Inhale, come up onto the ball of the foot, hold for as long as you comfortably can. Soft, steady gaze, relax the jaw if you can. Three breaths. I can do whatever I set out to accomplish. One more deep breath in and out if you can. We come up and we release and we shake it out. Well done. Doesn't matter whether you did one of those with me or all three. Well done. Nicely done. Okay, upward mountain. A lot of people tend to, you know, practice mountain like this. But when we have the arms, it can change the dynamics of our posture, our mood, and our thinking. And what it does, it really makes us think about postural alignment. We're only going to hold for a few breaths, but let's come back to our pose and our posture. So feet slightly apart, just a little bit, can be more stabilizing. Let's take a moment to distribute the weight evenly across the feet. Lift your toes if you can. Give them an active stretch and wiggle. And as you place them down, just aim to fan the toes apart as much as you can. Do that again if you can. Lift the toes, actively give them a stretch and a wiggle. Maybe do the same with the fingers. And as you place them down, see if you can spread them apart. And then as you stand, be sure to distribute the weight as much as you can, evenly across both feet and into both heels. Now we're going to add the arms. We're going to gaze ahead softly. We're going to inhale and raise the arms, palms facing. Relax the arms, head and neck facing forwards. Let's take three full breaths here. And there is a lovely affirmation. And it's these words, I am strong and protected. I am strong and protected. And as you gaze ahead, feel the strength and the power in your body rooting down into the earth. Strong and protected. You're connecting with Mother Earth underneath your feet. You're reaching up towards the skies. Again, this is beautiful to just repeat to yourself or simply have those words ruminating around you. Looking softly ahead, let's aim for one more full breath, feeling strong and protected, breathing in. And let's exhale and simply float the arms really slowly down, keep the facial features relaxed. Now, don't be tempted to move or fix your clothing. Allow yourself a moment there. Notice any physical sensations, 
Perhaps you're more aware of your posture. Perhaps you're just feeling the effects of how this can enhance and protect the immune system. And it's said to protect and radiate the electronic magnetic field around the body, but it boosts the immune system. We're gonna do it once more. Here we go, breathing in, raise the arms if you can, palms facing, and actively relax the shoulders away from the ears. Three slow breaths. Let's boost the immune system. Let's help the spine to feel and grow tall. I am strong and protected. And breathe the energy downward, yogis, into those feet, into those rooted feet. That's it. One more full breath in. And use the exhalation again, just to float the arms slowly down. Allow yourself to be quiet and still. Just notice any physical sensations and then relax. Now, as I say, that's said to be extremely good for just reminding us of postural alignment, but it's said to boost the immune system. There's an electronic magnetic field around us and that's said to be enhanced as well. And often when I do that, I can always feel a little taller or just more aware of my posture. And for many of us, if we've been having to sit at a desk all day, what a wonderful thing to allow your spine the freedom to feel stretched. So again, one you can do first thing in the morning, maybe looking out towards your garden if you have one or window box and just enjoy the fact that you're stretching your spine. Well, let's not get cold. We're going to just have a little go at another balance. I like to add a few balances because they're so very good for strengthening. If you haven't been able to get to the gym and many of us haven't been able to maybe do weight bearing, then these poses help to strengthen and keep you strong, particularly from things like trips and falls. If you're going out and it's wet, if you're going out and just, you know, on the pavements an awful lot, they're not steady, they're not even, very much um, full of potholes and cracked pavements. So again, this keeps the feet strong and prevents trips and falls from happening and reoccurring. So at any age, these are an investment. Okay, I've sold it to you, I hope. Let's take the weight onto the left leg and just again, take the right foot out. Have a go if you're tired. Remember, you can always skip a pose. And hands on our hips, let's look forwards. And this is why we do this after that lovely standing pose that we just did, because our spines are strong and we're aware of our posture. We're gonna raise that right leg, flex the toes towards you, engage the tummy muscles by pulling them in softly, but keep the spine tall. And with your hands on your hips, just looking ahead, hold and breathe for as long as you comfortably can. Balanced, strong and focused as we look forwards. That's it. Flex those toes of the right foot towards you, activate the leg and then release. And we'll try that on the left side. So again, come up onto the ball of the left foot, breathe in, raise the leg, flex the toes. Weight now stacked into the right leg. Hands on the hips, this is the first part. We do this now because we'll get a little bit tired soon. We're going to do 10 more minutes of active yoga and then come down and do our relaxation and our meditation. But for now, gaze ahead, feel the power as you breathe and hold that balance, good. And do release when you need to. Shake it out for a moment and we're gonna try something else. So take a breath, relax the shoulders, and let's move on, stage two of that balance. Now I want you to bend the right knee, hold on to it and take it out to the side. Good, hand on your hip, gaze ahead, left leg is standing, right knee is nice and open. Good, hold and breathe. As you gaze ahead, draw the strength from the center, breathe into the center and come in. Don't hold for too long, just have a go at one or two deep, even breaths but don't overstrain. Now carefully stack the weight into the right leg, bend the left knee, hand on that knee, looking forwards and we take it out to the side. I'm also flexing the toes of the left foot upwards, heel down, so I activate the foot. Fantastic, breathe and hold. Be balanced and present. Allow yourself to be balanced and present in this moment. And then release. And if you wobble, that's fine. Well done. Okay. 
When you're ready, we're going to move into the next pose. Grab some water if you need to. Now this pose is a squat, and squats are said to warm and energise us beautifully. I appreciate that balances, squats, they're not something that most of us find easy. So, grab some cushions if you need to. I'm going to grab just these two off the sofa and place them apart slightly. And they are going to help me in this squat. I'm going to press the heel into one cushion and the heel into the other. Now make sure the cushions aren't too big that you can still firmly anchor the heels down. Hands come to the prayer position and we're going to get ready to come down as far as you can. It may not be that far today, it doesn't matter. Bring the palms together. If possible, bring the elbows to the inner, inner knees, okay? So I'm pushing my elbows on my inner thighs and knees, looking forwards. And again, let's see if we can hold for several deep breaths. Nice, even breath. That's it. We gaze ahead. Soft jaw, steady gaze. Nice, even breaths. And you might want to add a little affirmation to help you here. I am centered and grounded in my life. I feel centered and grounded in my life. Even those words, feeling centered and grounded, the fact that you're a little further down near the earth, the steady earth, is a very centering and grounding pose in itself. And one to practice to help our hip mobility. But again, don't worry if you haven't got too far today. Simply hold and breathe for another breath with me if you can. Feeling centered and grounded. And then gently, we're not going to go up again. We're going to come out of the pose. Let's carefully sit on the mat and stretch your legs out. Well done. And then just give the legs a jiggle, stretch them in and out. Just let them relax for a moment. And here we are, we're going to come into the last part of the practice, the last few minutes, and then we'll go into relaxation. And I would recommend, again, a block or a pillow, or a cushion for your seated twist, okay? So from where you are, yogis, grab your block or cushion and place your bottom on there. Now our legs are forwards, both legs. We're going to flex the toes and just sit forwards again. It's a moment to breathe. Let's roll the shoulders back. And just again, bring your hands, if you wish to, to the prayer position. And again, a moment to be thankful for all that life has to offer. This is a really lovely moment again, just to focus as we come towards the end of the practice a little homecoming to check in with how we're feeling physically. Take a couple of deep breaths and just notice physically any sensations in your body. A moment just to focus back on that sweet breath. And relax. And those moments are like little vignettes through the practice. So whenever you feel you just need to stop, pause, and take a little thankful breath. My advice is do it. Okay, it's always, always valid. So, having used our breath as a way of pausing, we're now ready for our next pose. And we're going to bend our left knee. I'm sitting gently, firmly on a block or cushion. You don't have to, but it will add a little height to the spine. So, I'm going to hug this left uh, foot close to my chest, and I can look forwards and just Again, encourage my spine to sit as tall as I can. I've instantly flexed the toes of the foot that's forwards, the right foot, towards me. So that foot is switched on. Doesn't matter what I'm going to do, that foot, my opposite foot, is switched on. So I've brought the left heel as close to my left buttock as I can comfortably, which means I can now take my right hand forwards, wrap around arm, wrap it around the outside of the left thigh to contain it, and take my left hand behind me, Bring it close to my spine, but again, take an opportunity to look forwards. It's another way to keep my spine tall. Before I start to very gently twist, twist to my left. First, I twist from my belly, then my chest, and finally my left shoulder I look over gently. That right foot is still flexed. 
and holding this pose because twists are so warming for up to four deep breaths with me. Here we go, yogis. Breathing in, breathing out. Remember the affirmation that we did in the twist earlier. Remember, I am guided and protected as I move forwards in life. I am guided and protected as I move forwards in life. Twists help not only to unravel physically the knots in the spine, but are said to unravel fear and anxiety. So twists help with fear and anxiety about the future, but also what's behind. So in COVID-19 sense, they're a really current and healthy way to look after our mind and our bodies. Let's breathe in together. We'll use that exhalation to uncurl the spine, come back to center and release the leg. And we'll have a go on the other side. So you stay exactly where you are, yogis. All I need to do is change my direction. So you can, again, just make sure that you're doing it correctly by watching me. So this time, left leg is straight, right ankle and right heel as close as I can to my buttock without hurting myself, obviously. Sitting tall, looking forwards. Left arm comes forwards wrapping it around the outer edge of that right leg helps to keep it in place. Right hand behind me, tripod fingers, they come towards the spine. One more look, make sure I flex the left foot. Again, I want to get height in the spine and then carefully exhale over my right shoulder. Now, as I look behind me, for me, this side is much easier to turn to. So I just want you to notice physically without judging just start to investigate. Left and right side, do they feel physically different in this twist? And maybe they don't, maybe the subtleties or differences are very subtle. But just notice as you twist now to your right, is this side easier or more challenging or about the same? And what that does, it allows us to get really close and sensitive to our body and the differences that we feel in left and right. So don't judge it, just know that there may be differences there. Let's enjoy holding for two more deep breaths. Remember yogis, we've warmed ourselves up. It's like giving ourselves a big internal hug. And this practice is said to help with clarity. So that's another benefit, warming and aiding us, helping us to loosen mind and body. Let's take a deep breath in. Exhale, return to the center slowly, and then just release the leg. Sit back a moment, straight arms, and just shake the legs out, and take a deep breath in and out. Take that breath into your spine, because spinal twists are really strong internally. Remember earlier I mentioned how twists warm the gut, but they also invigorate spine and intestine. So internally, we need to just give our body a moment to relax. There's a lot of work going on there. Okay, yogis, we are going to finish, just with pose of the child, and then we're going to do a seated meditation. Now, in this last pose, which is a, a sort of our resting pose, again, because we're working the, the tummy muscles, we are going to come into pose of child. So there's my um, cushion for my forehead. And as I go back into Balasana, we make two loose fists, so my thumb is inside, my four fingers wrap round, what we call two loose fists we're going to make. And then we, we basically place um, the fists against the belly and fold over the thighs. We want to relax the belly and we breathe into our back body, so back body we want to breathe into, for 10 deep breaths. So make two loose fists if you can, knees together, Rest the fist gently on the belly if you can. If this doesn't feel comfortable, don't do it. You can simply have the arms by your sides. But if that feels comfortable, come forwards. Rest your forehead. And do take 10 deep breaths. And I'm just going to tell you the lovely affirmation. And it's these words. I am surrounded and protected by a warm blanket of serenity. Aren't those words lovely? So as you go into the pose, Think about those words. I am surrounded and protected by a blanket of serenity. 
There we go, forehead down. Again, just make sure your belly feels comfortable, even though those soft fists are pushing gently into them. This activates the digestive juice. It's like giving yourself a big internal hug, but also it gives the intestine a wonderful massage. When we think about massage as being external, let's you know massage our shoulders or our back. Well, what about massaging your belly? This is what this pose does exactly. It massages all your internal organs, helps your digestive system and the elimination system to work more productively. So five deep breaths. You are surrounded by a warm blanket of serenity as you breathe. One more deep, slow breath, yogis. And then slowly, slowly start to come up. Relax the hands, open and close them, give them a little shake out. And if that felt, you know, a little bit uncomfortable, don't worry too much. It's said to, as I say, warm and really massage the intestinal tract. So again, you may find you're hungrier, you may find even that, you know, you, you kind of need to go to the toilet a little bit more regularly today because of the massaging effect that these, these poses do. And I think that's just something to repeat, that yoga is not about external all the time. It's about the internal benefits as well. Well, we've got a couple of minutes, about three minutes. So I'm going to just sit and talk you through a little meditation. Do feel free to sit on your chair or your sofa if that's more comfortable for you. Otherwise, come into a cross-legged position. And we're simply going to bring the hands onto the knees. And this follows the idea of warming yourself up. And it's a lovely affirmation that can be done for five minutes, 10, 15, up to three times a day. And it brings us back to those sacred moments. And the other benefits of meditation are it calms the entire nervous system, it reduces the heart rate, and promotes a feeling of peace and serenity. So get yourself comfy, yogis. The words are nice and simple, and they come back to that idea of fire, warming ourselves up. And these are the words. So as we inhale, we can say inwardly or outwardly to ourselves, heart of the mother. As we exhale, we can say fire of the father. As we inhale, we say meet in me. And as we exhale and flow. So I'll say the whole sentence. Fire, sorry, heart of the mother. Fire of the Father, meet in me and flow. So I want you to think about the energy of the earth, meeting the energy of the sun, the masculine and feminine, meeting together and flowing. And allow your belly to be soft as you breathe. Let's take 10 deep breaths here. So as you inhale, if you wish to, heart of the mother. As you exhale, fire, fire of the Father. As you inhale. Meet in me, and as you exhale, and flow. Those are the words. Heart of the mother, fire of the father. Meet in me, and flow. Now as you say those words and breathe in and out deeply, allow your belly to be soft. Tune in to your heart, and also to the sacred moment that we give to meditation as we come to the end of our practice. Notice physically if you feel warmer. And just be aware of any physical sensations. As we inhale, if we wish to, saying that affirmation. Heart of the mother, fire of the father, meet in me and flow. Enjoy another five slow breaths with me, yogis, just drawing this time together. Breathe deep.
One more. Inhale, heart of the mother. Exhale, fire of the father. Inhale, meet in me. Exhale, and flow. And when you're ready, yogis, take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. And if your eyes were closed, gently opening them now. Give yourself a moment just to relax, shake it out. And then let's close our practice together. Take a breath in, bring the hands to the heart center. And take a moment to wish yourself and your body and your breath well. May they all continue to serve you well. Go well, yogis. Thank you. See you at coffee time.